Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Today, back into Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. This is our Let's Play Against the Devilish, Mr. Lodrick. And it is now March 3rd, 1942, and we are in the setup phase. We already looked at the combat for the first and the second. Uh, now moving our way into March here, March 3rd for the setup. And as we usually do, we're going to go look at all the stats and whatnot. And then I thought we'd take some time and really look at China this time because uh, sometimes the Chinese front can be a little bit of a stalemate, a little bit of a bore. That is certainly not the case here. And Lodrick's done a few things that I haven't seen before uh, that I actually really commend him for. Uh, and it's making it a little bit more challenging. So I thought we'd go talk about that. But before we do, let's go look at the stats. And uh, you can see here the sorties today, 60-60 for the Allies. The Japanese ran 73-73. Uh, air to air losses. We took six, he took zero. These happened in the Dutch East Indies. Zero and zero on destroyed on the field. He had one plane destroyed by flak. We took three operational losses. He took two for the campaign. It's pretty dang even. As it sits right now, he would have a major victory. Uh, we, well, let's look at the points. The Japanese score 15,203. We're at 7,490. So he is now more than two to one ahead of us. Uh, political points, 467. As I always say, 650 is the magic number. That's where you can really buy out an American regiment to send them out into the Pacific. Okay, Allied bases controlled, 467 to 371. So we're now down to less than 100 advantage there against Laudrick. Uh, Allied aircraft points loss, we're at 1048. The Japanese at 639 on the ground. We've just taken an absolute beating, whether from the air or on the ground itself. We've lost 6704 when it comes to ground forces. Allied ships sunk. We've now up to 392. Uh, as far as we know, the Japanese have seven. We suspect they have more. Uh, ships sunk. Let's see last turn what we lost. We lost the AVD, a tender out here. The Mackinac is an aircraft tender destroyer for six points. That was near Raoul Island. And then we also lost the Coast Farmer. You can remember that kind of piss, pissed me off. Uh, nine points on the Coast Farmer. Not a huge deal, but uh, I was upset that that one went down out by Raoul Island. Okay, looking back. We've talked about so many of these reinforcements time after time, but it's so important what you're going to be getting on the map as the allied player, right? I mean, this is what the game's all about. you got to get more men and material uh, because you're at such a disadvantage at the start, as we've certainly seen here so far. We get new Kitty Hawks into Townsville. Now, those are the Australian fighters. Like I usually say, they kind of come sometimes with bad pilots. There is one group of them that comes in with a decent set of pilots. I hope it's that one. We need 16 Kitty Hawks there. Uh, again, they're fighters. They're okay. You know, they're 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 planes you can put in the air. We get swordfishes in at Columbo, so that'll be nice in case he comes back snooping around Columbus. Columbus. Yeah, it's not Ohio. Uh, Colombo out in Ceylon, uh, as long as he comes, you know, if he comes snooping around there again with his carriers, will at least have some torpedo bombers, which is what the swordfish is. Uh, Hurricane 1 Trops in at Aden. We always welcome those. Uh, the Trops are good planes, good pilots, generally speaking. Uh, so those will be coming in at Aden in three. And then we see the Hornet, the carrier of the Hornet will finally make it onto the map along with the Vincennes, which is a cruiser that uh, will also be coming on. And uh, those are the planes associated with those uh, ships. Then uh, Skytrains, bow fighters down at Sydney, those are fighter bombers. They're not very good, really, but they're something. You see we get some more Kitty Hawks, 16 more of those in at Brisbane. So we're finally getting Australian aircraft in, in at Australia. Uh, of course, we need as many aircraft in Australia as we could possibly get there. I've got American aircraft heading there. We're getting naturally some uh, Australian aircraft. The more, the merrier down the Australian coast. Okay, top pilots. How are we looking now? Well, we've had uh, 
Yeah, we got two aces here. Stone, who's been good for some time, you can see the Hurricane 2B Trops. Uh, the guys flying those are, you know, running to the top of this list because those are just excellent aircraft. Uh, he's got six. We have Kerry here that has five out in the uh, 135th Squadron. Uh, so, okay, we've got a number at four, a number at three. Not great, not great, not not what I'm used to usually. Uh, we just have not had as much luck in the air as you will certainly against the AI, but even just a mediocre uh, Japanese player. Uh, Lodrick is very, very good at protecting his aircraft and doing bombing runs while doing that. Uh, we talked about ships sunk, what new ships are coming on. We'd already talked about the Hornet, which is the big one, the next carrier we get on. Along with that Vincennes, did I sort this the right way? You got to hit that button twice. I did it. Okay, we get a bunch of destroyers at Balboa. They'll be waiting for the Hornet when it sails out of the U.S. East Coast down uh, at the Panama Canal. We get a couple of cargo. We get an AS here, which is submarine tender. Uh, some more destroyers at, pa at uh, Cape Town. Now, these are the good British destroyers with eight ASW. Always love to get those. A lot, lot of new tankers at Abaddon. We need that. There's the Hornet. Uh, and we'll talk more about the Hornet, obviously, when it comes on. But we also get a British carrier, the Formidable, in at Cape Town. So it, the Hornet's not the only one, but, you know, the British carriers are certainly poor uh, by any standard in 1942. Uh, a destroyer at Mombasa. We haven't gotten much into Mombasa. Okay, enough of that. Um, ground reinforcement schedule. Again, so super important. Uh, in a few days, we get a, another core into Chongqing. This is in Lusu War Area, or that's its command. I assume this is something we had destroyed before that's uh, coming back on. We also get a few uh, new ones. I know these got destroyed, 21st and 31st. They've reformed. They'll be coming into Chongqing, and you see it's just, you know, uh, core after core after core here for China. They do not lack manpower. We also get the 7th Marine Regiment. This is important because we start getting Marine Regiments quite regularly, and we've got to find a way to get them out into the Pacific as fast as we can. Uh, to any of the islands, you know, the Marines will be putting on the islands for the most part. The Army units, you want to put more maybe on uh, Australia itself, or eventually, I mean, look, they can be out on the islands. I'm just saying, uh, traditionally, the Marines would be out more in the islands. Um, but anyway, I mean, we, we've just got to cover everything we can regardless. All righty, that's the numbers for this time, so... You know, everything's still okay. We looked at uh, Pearl Harbor this last time. Let's try to do a high-level view of the map, but actually really do that this time instead of having me stop and explain things and only getting halfway through India. Uh, so you can see a lot of things coming in and out, out of Abaddon and Aden, going to Karachi. Now I have more things going to Cape Town. You see all these uh, ships over here? They're all eventually, for the most part, heading out to Cape Town. Uh, because of that, I've got uh, I'm building up Socotra just just a little bit in case something gets hit down here. It has some place to go on the map, uh, retreat to just a little bit of fuel and supplies and whatnot. So I'm bringing that in at Socotra. If we look at it, you know, it's got a port level two and an airfield, uh, 1347, 4006. You know, just a little bit. Uh, what do I have headed over here? I've got some tankers, but I think yeah, I was just going to drop off a little fuel here. Have it go back uh, and have this AO sit here at Socotra. So if something needs to refuel, it can't get off map or something, it's got a place to go. Now I could either leave the AO sitting here or just drop it off. Okay, quit explaining everything. I'll try. Uh, anything that's up here that we don't need for garrison is moving south. You can see an Australian unit here. This is just artillery. We've got this headed for uh, Calcutta. Now, I'm going to bring these Australian units down here that just landed. Uh, and we looked at those last time. Oh, here's one. Well, here's two more of the artillery units down here. They're making their way through um. Ahmadabad, uh, and so they're on the rails coming through there. I don't know where those infantry, did we have the infantry in yet? I'm not sure that we do. 
Uh, there's infantry on the way. I don't see a transport here, and I don't see them, but that doesn't mean they're not out here somewhere. Anyway, the basic idea is they're all coming to either Madras or Calcutta. It's a full Australian division. Now, we'll wait, and once we get more Australian, or uh, I'm sorry, Indian and British troops into India, then we'll take the Australians back up to Karachi and sail them around. Uh, but right now, I just don't want a lightning strike on India, and this was very close, so I brought the entire 6th Australian Division down here to India. Okay, uh, Cape Town, you get the idea. We're going to Perth, back and forth, back and forth. We see here these are cruisers, but I think this is kind of part of his carrier squadron. I do have some things trying to get into Rangoon as he's cleared the Colombo Ceylon area. Now, he may reverse course, but these are all one-point ships for the most part, and I'm trying to dump in as much supply into Rangoon as I can. As you can see, we're at 6582. That's not good enough. I mean, this really should be at like 50,000, right? And so I've got this group, let's check that out, three 1.8 AKLs with the Auricula, uh, a KV, which is a Corvette, but it's got um, some anti-sub ability, four, right? And so that's what all I've got going into here. And I'm going to try to get this up to 20, 25,000. You don't want to lose Rangoon because you get starved out there. Uh, that that would be a tragedy, and I haven't gotten enough over here yet, so I'm trying to, as we saw his carriers, clear the area, and that's kind of what you want to do early game as the allies is, you know, you always, the first priority is identify where the hell his carriers are. Now, you may, you may be pointing at me and say, really? Uh, because you saw a circumstance where we didn't know where they were, and of course, they ended up right off the coast of Bombay. You just got to try to avoid that, and then once they clear the area, get as much supply into your hot spots as you can. Rangoon, certainly a hot spot. Colombo. Now, anything on the Indian subcontinent uh, is going to get that naturally unless he cuts a rail line or something. But just talking about shipping, you got to get into Rangoon and Colombo once he clears areas. We've already lost Singapore, as you well know. Palembang still exists uh, in our hands. Of course it still exists, but it's in our hands still. But you can see all of the parade of ships heading to Java, right? And it's only a matter of time before he spreads out, spreads his wings here to Jilla Jap. He's already started to move. He's into Jok Jakarta. Now you're always going to lose Java against anybody that can play the game whatsoever. Uh, but it's just a matter of holding on as long as you can. Uh, you can sometimes do what they call Fortress Palembang and just bring the entire third uh, Indian core in here, or you can bring in, you know, the British rapid reaction forces in here and whatnot, and just build a massive group here at Palembang. I decided not to play that way. I think it's kind of unfair and uh, ahistoric, and so I didn't do that. Uh, instead, I put a lot of that third Indian core up at uh, Colombo, some of it into Rangoon, um, and so Palembang will fall. There's just no way for us to keep it. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that a place like Palembang or Batavia, they have enough industry that because of the massive uh, bit of fuel that they have, they can create supply. So you can kind of sit in those for a very long time because you're not going to run out of food uh, or you shouldn't really. And so just, you know, that's why people will play the fortresses there. And when I say fortress, I just mean they build them way beyond historical levels uh, to try to keep the Japanese, you know, occupied there for longer and longer. We played a little more historical here. Uh, so the, all of this will eventually fall, but we're trying to hold off as long or hold out as long as we can. He's pushed down into the D Dutch East Indies. As you see, he's got more ships on the way. He's already taken these islands out here, Dobo, Taberfame, some Lockie. You don't usually necessarily see this. I mean, usually he would go after these islands. We do have a decent force at Koapang, but that'll eventually fall as well. And then as you see, it's Darwin. Now the challenge at Darwin is it never has enough supply. Uh, it's not hooked into the main Australian line, right? The uh, rail only comes out here past Catherine. And so uh, you can't get uh, the normal amount of supply up here, you got to try to bring it around the coast. Well, we're already blocked off here because his carriers have been sitting here forever. Are they here? Yep. 
There are his carriers right off Buna. Well, we're not going to be floating, you know, transport or cargo ships up here. They're just going to get blown out. Uh, this is a very good place for the Japanese to set his carriers. Uh, first of all, he's in shallow water, so he can uh, very quickly sniff out all of our submarines around here we try to keep them in deep water if they jump over into the shallow water to try to take on that group he's got you know uh, various anti-sub ships out here that'll sniff them out in the shallow water so you can't really bring them around here which means you got to bring them around here now he has done a really good job of having subs out here sometimes he's run down the coast with uh you know, cruisers and some light cruisers and whatnot and blown up things. Uh, but this cargo task force did make it into Darwin. It dropped off here. Now, our supply is only, it's not good enough. You know, you got to have this up 30,000, 25, 30,000. I was too slow in this game getting this stocked up. And it's become a real problem. Now, I've got this sub here just kind of protecting. I'm actually going to move it out into the deep water here and uh let's do it this way take that out as the destination hex we'll just say that darwin is the destination hex you've got to have a, a base as the destination to then set up a patrol zone so set patrol zone set boundary one and i think i'm going to sit it right here there 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 we go. Okay, so that's going to be a one hex patrol zone. If we go back, we make sure the max reacts at one. So he's going to sit right here, and anything that they try to get down in, well, through here or here, uh, he should react to. Is that just one sub? No, it's two. It's the S-37 and S-40. These are better American subs, mainly because they carry the Mark 10 torpedo. So we're just going to pop up here. We're going to wait and just try to get something through here. Maybe need to put some subs up in this area, this area. So anything that's coming through here, because these Dutch subs are not doing Jack Diddley here in this shallow water. He sniffs them out every time. So we need to move those down into the deep water, maybe like here, because he can't really pass in the deep water on a react of one and get past us. So maybe something there, maybe something like here, uh, maybe something up here and move these out because they're not stopping anything here off of Summering. Uh, Perth, down here you can see how much I have coming into Albany. Esperance, some of these are coming into Esperance. I've kind of uh, stopped bringing them into Perth because he had so much submarine activity here and he's run down that coast several times that I was like, yeah, let's just bring them a little further south. Between the two, they can offload maybe qu as quickly as Perth uh, at Albany. You know, you got a size three port. We're going to try to take that to a seven. You've got plenty of supply coming in here. I need to get, now we've got some engineers, I think, here, just two of them in the base force. We really need to get some engineers here at Albany uh, and really build this port up as fast as we can. I've got some other stuff coming around here. You can see I've even got things way down here that's coming into Adelaide and Melbourne and then heading back to Cape Town, just a safer uh, route. Uh, I also will bring troops down here. If you're bringing troops into Australia, don't bring them into Perth. Bring them in further south and come all the way to Melbourne. Uh, because for one thing, when they come into Perth, you've got to then move them down this rail, uh, or actually, usually the best way to do it is to march them because you don't want to stop the flow of fuel and supply here. So you'd march them out to Calgary, uh, or Kalgoorlie, I've been told it's called, and then you put them on the major rail. Well, by the time you do that, you could have sailed them all the way to Melbourne, had them off and have them where you want them, right? We'll spend a lot of time next time in Australia. So I'll do that next time uh, where I have everything set up. You can see out here at the islands, we've got all kinds of activity, cargo, transports. You know, you can see them coming into Auckland uh, at Suva, the most important base out here because it's worth almost a thousand points to the Japanese. Uh, we're, you know, we'll talk about that. More cargo heading out here into the Pacific. Down at Rarotonga, we've dropped off stuff. We've got things way south here. Things moving through by Tahiti, by Haiva Oa. Um, you can see all of the shipping that I have going on out here. And it's just trying to load everything up with supply and trying to get as many troops. That's a tanker group. 
That's a big tanker group. That's going to Hiva Oa right now to drop off. Now, Hiva Oa doesn't have enough uh, in its fuel limit to hold all of this. So I'm just taking it there. I won't unload all of it there. I'll stop there, get a minimal refuel, and go on to like you know, Auckland or on to Sydney or Melbourne, something like that with this big old group. Uh, what else do I have out here? Uh, transports. Okay, this is a big one. It's got the 108th Infantry. It's got the 134th Base Force, the 31st Aviation Base Force. So it's got a lot of troops, three destroyers and a light cruiser just to kind of protect a little AA, a little something in there. It's not going to hurt. You know, if this gets attacked, we're losing a whole hell of a lot. Doesn't really matter if you have a light cruiser in there or not. Um, okay, uh, again, you know, we'll spend more time at Pearl Harbor. We've got, uh, you know, stuff coming in and out of uh, Crystal Ball here, the main port at the Panama Canal. Drop off here with your short-range ships. Take the longer-range ones out of Crystal Ball to Auckland or to Australia. Uh, at least that's how I do it. Um, so the 12,000 endurance ships have those on continuous supply from the USD's coast into Cristobal and then take anything that's 13,600 or above endurance and ship it out of Cristobal and you should be good there. Let's go to the aforementioned China and see what the heck is going on here. All right. We'll start all the way in the west over here at pa Pashuan. Pashuan. It's probably Pashuan, right? Pashuan. That sounds right to me. Uh, hold on. I'm going to grab a drink really fast. All right. I'm back. Uh, sometimes you probably didn't notice anything, but I like to tell you when I, I drop off there for a second. Uh, if you say Pashuan too many times, uh, you got to get a drink. Uh, Pashuan. Okay. Well, what do we have out here? Let's see. Now, you may be tempted to move out of here. You do have a garrison requirement. And I will say, if and when he takes Rangoon, he's going to start moving up to Mandalay. You just want to make sure the Japanese can't start enveloping you uh, here in China. Now, this is very rough, mountainous terrain. Very difficult to attack into. But you want to make sure you leave some forces out here. And if we look at this 88th Chinese Division, it's part of 11th Group Army. And this is what we've got down here is a, or over here in the west is 11th Group Army. And if we go here to uh, Suyong, uh, Su Young, this again will be part of 11th Group Army. And then down here, Kunming is the main location in the west, right? So you've got Kunming over here, and if we look down here, there it is, 11th Group Army. That is part of Fourth War area, and we'll look around, and if you go up here, and this is how I always operate in China, is I've, I've got this at the ready. Uh, we're going to take off, whoops, we're going to take off all nations. We're just going to put on Chinese. We're going to take off all units, and we're going to look at headquarters units. And if we go down here, it's not necessarily sorted the best. Uh, let's do it. No, nah, not that way. Let's do a type. Okay, there we go. So you've got China Command. You've got the Air Force headquarters, Chinese Air Force headquarters. And then it goes down the group armies. And as you can see here, I don't see 4th Group Army or 4th, well, I'm sorry. We're with 11th Group Army, and there you see 4th War area, and it tells you right where it is in Kunming, right? Let's go down and look for 4th War area, which is the bigger kind of overall command. It's in Lu Chao, all right? So let's just go and find where that is. And this is how I do it in China all the time, because you, you will lose track of where all of this stuff is. You have so many forces. So the fourth war area is all the way down here in Lu Chao, but that's okay because really, I mean, you don't want a war area all the way up here. You'd rather it be with the troops that are probably going to get the most action. These guys don't really necessarily need the command bonuses. Now that may change when the Japanese get over here or if they get over here, but for now, these guys being out of their war area command's not a big deal. We've got, uh, oh, I was looking at this. I was like, wait a minute. Let's go back up to Kunming. You'll also see that, uh, so we've got the 11th group army up here. 54th Chinese should be in 11th group. All of these are in 11th group. And you can see we've got a garrison requirement. We have a total strength of 487 out here. So not, you know, 
unsubstantial. I mean, it is actually a decent amount of strength out at this garrison, uh, and that's fine. Again, you want to make sure you don't just leave this wide open, but because of the garrison requirements, you probably wouldn't anyway. Kunming also has a size 3 airfield. I usually take my bombers out here to train them, and the reason I do that is because Chongqing the kind of obvious place they'd be, or even Cheng Tu, another obvious place. So Cheng Tu is a level two airfield. Chongqing is a level five. This is the best airfield you're going to have in China for the most part. What's Cheng Shai? Three. Yeah, so, I mean, you can see the five looks really good, right? But Chongqing will get bombed from over here. It's well within range. Kunming, Japanese players tend have a tendency to kind of forget about it, uh, and it is a size 3 airfield. This is also when you fly freight out of Lido, and so every transport that we have on this side of the map, and we're going to get more, comes to Lido, try to get at least two or three base forces up here, or an air wing up here, because you want to be flying as many supplies from Lido, and if we look at the command, supply transport, Kunming. It's 10 away. This has an extended radius of 12, so it can get there, right? And uh, usually going to fly this, at, you know, 8,000 or 6, I think they recommend 6,000 feet. I've got it at 8,000, you know, no big deal. But anyway, Kunming is the main airfield you're going to be flying supplies in from, from India, right? So, okay, over here at Kunming, we've got all of our bombers on training. You see here, training they start off so poor. I've got them up here into the 40s now, uh, but we don't have any fighters to protect them. Not really. You probably saw the flying tiger back here. Uh, we don't have many left. Here's one. We've got one flying tiger left in China, uh, and I've just got him sitting here at Chongqing. I probably should move him down uh, to Kunming just because. I mean, you know, no reason for him to be here and get bombed on the airfield. So we'll just transfer base down to uh, Kunming. And there it is. It's 41 of 41. We're going to put it one over its aviation sport, uh, but we'll just have to live with it. That's okay. All right, so 11th group army is out here. It's part of Fourth War area, which happens to be down here. So let's find out what's going on down here. And we'll go straight into Lu Chao, which is, you know, really Kuei Lin is worth 60 Lu Chao is worth 20 to the Japanese, and Nanning is worth 60. I mean, so that's 140 points in this little area, not to mention uh, Wu Chao is worth 20 as well. So I've got a kind of advanced force out here, but really you kind of want to defend back here. I always use this major rail as a real marker as it comes around here. <clears throat> you don't, you know, you want to try to hold on to this as long as you can, you don't want this situation where the Japanese can just send all the freight down these rail lines that they can, if you can. Now, we're in a little bit of a scramble here in China. You want to get your cavalry units out here and try to sit on this rail and disrupt it. Uh, that can definitely benefit you. But let's look at Lu Chao. And we've already talked the aforementioned Fourth War area is down here, including 9th Group Army. So 9th Group Army is part of 4th War area. You can see there the command 4th War. We've got a 509 total here. We've got the 31st Chinese, which is part of 9th. Uh, we've got the 71st Chinese. We've got the base force, which is attached to 4th War area. And we've got some artillery out of the Central Reserve. And so Central Reserve comes into Chongqing, Try to get some things down the road here to the rail here at Taeyun, and then you can kind of, you know, ship it around here wherever you want, uh, assuming he's not right on the rail line. So, okay, we've got a decent force here, 509, and then let's go out here to Nanning and look and see what we've got. Out here we've got 35th Group Army. That is also part of Fourth War area. So as you can see, all of this right here is Fourth War area, or at least the group armies that are under Fourth War. We've got 281 here. I mean, I would certainly like more, but we don't really have uh, the troops it would take. You know, some of Fourth War areas out here, but we'll look at that in a second. Uh, Kuei Lin, we've got 19th Group Army. And as you see, 19th Group Army is part of 9th War area. So not 4th War area, it's part of 9th War area, which is actually operating right up in this area. 4th, 9th. 
So we've got this little separation here. So let's go out to Wu Chow before we look at Kuei Lin and see what we have here. 16th Group Army is under Fourth War area. Again, we've got two more corps here, 62nd and 2nd Provincial. Uh, we've also got a base force out here that's attached to Fourth War area out here at Wu Chow. So we have 428 strength. That's not bad, right? I mean, we've got 509 here. I sent 428 out here to Wu Chow, or at least didn't draw it back, as kind of a little bit of an advance force here. He is now in the hex with us. It says he's got 18,000 troops here and 123 guns, 56 AFVs. We have total about 15, a little more than that, almost 16,000 troops against his 18,000 troops out here. Eh, he's going to knock us out of here. You know, when it comes to the Chinese, you really have to outnumber the Japanese, probably two to one early war, certainly, uh, to hold on. And so, you know, when we're fighting equals here, they're not really fighting equals. That's just equal men. The Japanese, much better much better morale, experience, equipment, go on, you know, I mean, the, even more. He has AFVs. We have none in all of China, really. So, you know, he's going to knock you out of here with uh, tanks and otherwise. But we're going to try to hold here, and then, you know, to the extent we get kicked out of here, we'll move up the road. We could certainly hold this and maybe Quillen. We'll look at that in a minute, with a 1,000 av right but not with 400 and not with 500 they'll have to be together okay so that's all of fourth war area it runs all the way down here um and then let's move up to quay lin then all right at quay lin we already talked about we've got 19th group army that is part of ninth war area all right let's make sure all of these things are 19th uh, group yep 19th group attached to uh, this is Central Reserve, so this is something I pulled out of the reserves. You can't change the command, so they're always really going to be out of, you know, all full command bonuses. Um, you know, that's just how it works. I mean, you can't, there's no command. You couldn't switch this if you wanted to, uh, but you got to bring things down out of the reserve. This is also attached to 19th Group, so that's good. This Space Force is is actually attached to the fourth war area that's over here. It is in command for the war area because I believe war areas have a command radius of five, right? Yep, command radius five. So we're just loaning that over here to a ninth war area group. And then artillery almost always out of the central reserve. But they're sitting here at 937. Which one of these cores is so massive? Well, we've got three pretty big ones, 333 on the assault, 284, 280. So all together, I mean, that's nice, right? 900 here. When this guy falls back, we'd have over 1,000 or close to 1,000 there. That's a lot of strength. It's going to be hard, but usually the Japanese have a big army at Canton. You know, they take Hong Kong, and then they turn out of there, and they've got a lot. And you got to hold this. If he starts pushing up this road, you cannot let the Japanese threaten Chongqing from the south because they envelop these uh, troops out here at Changsha, and you, you are in big, big trouble. All right. So this is all 19th. Let's go look for 9th War area. All right. And if we go down here, you see all the group armies. Ninth, and once you've sorted this, it'll stay this way until you change it. So Ninth War Area, sure enough, is in Changsha. That's where I thought it was, all the way up here in Changsha. Well, what happened was we've only got so many things in Fourth, so I had to send some things from Ninth War Area out here to Kuei Lin, which I have done. All right, let's see what we have in here. As I said, 19th Group, we looked through that, fine. Okay, as we move, I say as, you know, let's look in here. We already did. All right. We do have the red exclamation point, meaning they are low on supply. If we look here, we're, it's not showing up yet because some of this came in from the reserves. And so they brought supply with them. But very shortly, we are going to get short on supply, even if they have some built up because it's 1563 in the hex. We need 2571. 
Uh, and so, you know, it kind of limits how big of a force you can put in a place like Quillen because uh, ultimately you're going to run out of supply. We may have to have some rapid reserves here uh, or otherwise or have some of these guys ready to go. Let's look out here in southeastern China where we just get bombed time after time. What is, What is even out here? Well, we've got 32nd Group Army, which is part of 3rd War Area. We'll go look for that in a minute. Uh, 70th Chinese Corps, you can see it's still got a 227 on the assault, 183 for the 86th Chinese. Uh, they're both attached to 32nd Group Army. Let's go look for 3rd War Area. I think I know where it is. Uh, there's 3rd War Area. It's at 8154. We'll click on that and it'll light up where it is. It's back here. It's on the run. It's on the run back to Heng Yang. Uh, okay, so third war area is going to go in there. This is part of third war area. Right now, I have it going out towards Fu Chao because we're trapped back here. They're living off the land, so we can still survive. I was going to try to get to the coast, but I'll probably turn these guys around. Now, when you're moving troops out here and you're not really about to get attacked, you know, put them on move. They move a lot faster. If you think there's any chance they'll get attacked, make sure they're on combat. But what are we going to do? Move. Let's change the destination and let's have him move back up here. Actually, maybe these two can link up, but let's have him get out on the main road and get to this X at least. So let's set that uh, consent as the destination for now and then set all to this op mode so that they're all on move set all to this combat orders and then we don't want anything you know getting out in front of the command so set all to follow so the commander will kind of lead this is what you want to do when you're in move mode and you're marching set it to follow the command if you may get in combat you may just uh, put it on combat and then set all to march you know that way they kind of uh, some things may go faster than others or whatnot uh, but anyway Generally speaking, generally speaking, that's how you want to do it. Let's get over here on the road and bring this back up here. So what's up here? Uh, 28th Chinese Corps, this is part of 10th Group Army. And then 3rd New Chinese Corps, part of 3rd War Area. Well, we know where 3rd War Area is going. It's going into Heng Yang. Let's look and find out where 10th Group Army is. I have a feeling it might be up there with 3rd War Area. Uh, but 10th Group Army, there we go, click on that, and sure enough, 8154, that looks familiar, his commander is up here, uh, so we're going to have to go try, you know, these guys are commanded by 3rd War Area and 10th Group Army, so they're out here all on their own, I have got this set to, uh, on this one you could just do March, um, it's going to hex 8255. I'm just going to guess that's right here. 8255. Yep. I've got him I've got these two units moving up this main road. Now they keep getting a crap bombed out of them. So you have to go back every time and make sure they're on move because they will go to combat mode. Uh let's cancel. Actually, let's cancel the move and reset it. Cancel the move. Okay? Now move to 8255. And uh, now watch out. When you do that, if you had moved in the hex at all, that goes to zero. Set all the march. All right, so they're all, they're going to march together out to 8255. You can see he's got a big unit here. I think maybe we can outrun him if he doesn't move out of Nanchang here. Let's hope. All right, so get him going down that way. Uh, the Changsha area. Okay, going to grab another drink. Be right back. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. As I always say, you probably didn't notice, uh, but I did have to step away for, the, for a second there uh, and back into the mysteries of China. Now, we've talked about these two stacks out here, and if I could, there we go. 
All right, and they're just really trying to figure out a way to either get back to our lines or get to the coast or get somewhere. Now, they can supply themselves in hexes, assuming the Japanese aren't in the hex with them. Now, they still will, you know, forage a little bit, uh, but it makes it much more difficult in, if the Japanese are in the hexes. Um, but if they're not, you know, if you're running two cores out here in a command, in this case, 32nd Group Army, they can live out here forever, and that may give you some ideas about a partisan-type war that you can fight, you know, where you just jump around here. Now, this rail line is so important. As it comes down here, it's going to supply and fuel all of these Japanese troops, you know, down through this area. And then also, if you look over here, I mean, he, there's no way he could have good supply here unless it's completely uninterrupted. And so we're going to want to be thinking about running cavalry units or maybe just a core or two cores and um, a command out here just to try to mess with this supply because ultimately the Japanese have a massive number of troops here. They have better troops than you do, better equipment. So you're always going to be trying to look at ways to cut their supply. Now, one thing Lodric has done this time that I really like is it appears he's kind of heading north here. Most Japanese players want to come here to Changsha immediately. And this is a very difficult area for them to operate in. They don't necessarily have great supply. You've got a river, a massive river here, and then another one. Uh, what is that? The Yangtze, I believe. And so it's just difficult for them to take this right off the bat. Uh, so anyway, let's look at this. What do we have here that's trying to get back? Well, this is the biggest proportion of Third War area, and we saw these units out here. I think they're both pointed back to Third War area. Well, this goes back to 10th Group Army. This is Third War area. 10th Group Army, I believe, is in Third War area. And then if we go down here, we've got 32nd Group uh, Third War area, right? Well, that's that's the other bit of third war area they all start kind of down here in this section and you have a decision to make do you just hold out here kind of and build a fortress and these you know two or three or four bases or do you try to get back to your lines now in this game i have tried to get back to the lines uh <laughs> When somebody bombs as aggressively as Lodric does, it makes it very difficult to do because every time these units get bombed, or not every time, but the vast majority of times they do, they switch to combat mode. So they move, they get out of move mode and they go to combat mode. Well, in a case like this, so we've gotten them quite a ways back, but if you are in the hex with the Japanese, never be on move mode right in this case i'm chancing it because i can see that he's not moving we would see the little divot on his counters there if he was moving you can see the divot on ours right um he's he doesn't appear to be moving so i've got these guys on move mode try well i said that and i don't well let's move them over to move mode because they likely got bombed last turn and that's what I was talking about. So let's move them over to move mode. You can switch back and forth between combat and move, and it doesn't take away the distance you've already traveled. However, if you, you know, click on destination hex and you change it, then it goes back to zero. So just always keep that in mind. Pro tip. Uh, anyway, let's get back out here to third war area. What are their orders right now? Well, they're all in combat, and I want, well, the command is in combat. I want to make sure they are all are, so I set all to this op mode. All to this combat orders. Well, the only one we have available is defend, but we'll go ahead and you know click that anyway. Set all to follow, set all to march. We're going to have it set all to follow. I don't want any to get out in advance or in front of, him, of the command. So you know when you set all to march, they move at their own speed. When you set all to follow, they move at the speed of the command. And so I would rather do that. So we're trying to get back. Where's our destination, you say? Hang Yang. And Hang Yang is incredibly important here because what will happen often is the Japanese will come down here and, you know, they try at Changsha, but they're like, ah, screw that. Let's go around here, you know, and, and try to take Hang Yang. He may be a little soft in the underbelly. <clears throat> well, we are not here. You see the red exclamation point? Why is that? Well, we're not getting enough supply in here. And if we look at Hang Yang, 
uh, well, actually, let's look at the units. You can see it right here better. We only have 554 supply in this hex. We need 5,270 to stay at full strength. So what do you do? Well, this happens all the time in China, and especially if the Japanese player uh, cuts off the, the Burma Road, right? So you're flying supplies down here, and as long as you control this road right here, you're getting 500 extra supply every time. But you see how little that really is compared to what we need. But be that as it may, it's something. Um, and that, when this gets closed down, if it does, it makes the situation, you know, much worse even. So what do you have to do? Well, you really, I, as I use as a rule of thumb, it's usually about 800 AV. Now, you could say AV is not the best way to measure this, and I would agree with you. I'm just saying kind of a general rule of thumb is having eight or maybe 900 AV in any one base, anything above that, you're gonna have a supply problem. Well, what do you do? Because I mean, you need to have a lot of AV here because the Japanese are on the way, right? Um, and you know, he's got armies out here with 2,500 AV, 3,000 AV. So what do you do? Well, I think the best thing to do generally is leave this at about 1,000, but then just back up other units that are connected you know, to this war area, just at these bases just behind. And if you see he's starting to make a play for Hang Yang, you can very quickly try to get them down here and join in the battle. Uh, but meanwhile, they're not reducing the effectiveness of all of your forces at this base. So let's see what we've got at the base, and let's go to attach two. Uh, there we go, uh, from top to bottom. We've got 7th War Area here, okay? So 3rd War Area is here, coming back here. Initially, 3rd is here. 7 kind of starts, I believe, right up in here, if you could see the map. And then I brought it down here. Okay, so China Command, 7th War Area, okay? We've got artillery that goes back to the Central Reserve. Nothing we can do about that, that's all fine. Then we have ninth War Area, 7th, 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 and 6th War Area. So 7th War Area is the big command we have here. So we have a couple that aren't directly connected to 7th War Area. And in my estimation, those are the ones you're going to want to move to those bases right back here. Um, so take 9th War Area, 30th Group Army. Well, I just happen to know that 9th War Area is actually over at Changsha. So why don't we move the whatever is attached to 9th War Area here. That way it can go down or it can go over to Changsha if we need it to. And so how would we do that? We'll get over here. 30th Group Army goes back to 9th War Area. Okay, let's click on that. Uh, we can move. There's nothing that's threatening directly to attack us. We'll put it here to Sengtan. Uh, and then we'll set future objective to Seng Tong, and they can sit right here and they can help on both locations. Okay, let's go back. So we've moved that one. Then we look at 6th War Area. Now this is a cavalry corps. Where the heck is 6th War Area? Well, if we go up here, uh, oh, we're going to have to do all this again because I did log out. So let's take out all nations. Let's take out all nations. There we go. Okay, and let's just put on Chinese. Well, let's take off all units and just put headquarters units. Okay, and so we're looking for Sixth War area. It is actually at Ai Chang. So it's up here. We've got this cavalry, so it's the cavalry, and we could go back here and look for it uh, if you prefer to do it this way. Fifth Chinese cavalry. He's got a 219 Av. I mean, that's pretty dang strong, right? We've already got plenty of troops troops at Ai Cheng, but this unit can move quickly, so why don't we move this? We could move it up here, we could move it right here, which is probably my preferred place to put it, or we could put it right up here, somewhere that's fairly close, so that if we get in a scrap down here, we can do something. Well, in the first instance, let's put it back here at this base, and let's set the objective to there. Actually, I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to leave it Hang Yang, because I think that's eventually where this unit will fight. So let's just leave it at Hang Yang, even though we're going to be sitting at this base. Okay, let's go back to Hang Yang. We've now moved 6th War Area, 
Ninth War area, not the actual counter for Ninth War area, but things attached to them. Okay, so then we've got 30th Group Army. Oh boy, there we go. 30th Group Army. That is this unit that we're moving from Ninth, right? Ninth War area. So we had 1865 here. We really need to get down around 1,000. Okay, and so all of these things in 30th Group, what do they add up to? About seven or eight hundred, I would say. Okay, so let's move all of these. We'll just go to move. Let's move them all to this base with their command. So we're moving 30th Group Army up, which is attached to 9th War Area, and we're going to have it backstop Changsha and Hang Yang. Okay, so we did the first one. Did I change the objective? We could always do it when it gets there, but I like to do it right at the time so you don't forget it. Uh, okay, and so that's one, and then, you know, of course we'd do two. I won't sit here and do all of these. I just want to give you a basic idea of how you kind of set these up. Um, so now, I mean, it's going to be in command range of Ninth War, War area, but it could also ha help out at Hang Yang. And you just go through here, move to the base, set the objective to the base. Uh, now, we could set the objective or leave it at Hang Yang if we definitely think that's where it's going to be. But it may go over to Cheng Sha and fight there with the rest of Ninth War area. So I'm not going to go through all that, but you get the basic idea. Then we have something that's in 23rd Group Army. I don't believe 23rd Group Army is here. Uh, so 49th Chinese Corps. Okay. Where is... What is that again? 23rd and then we're you can see we're moving all of 30th okay 23rd group army where is that uh let's go find out so we'll go down here 23rd group army there it is it is at 8154 and it's part of this group that's trying to get back to hang yang so we're going to leave it here and wait for its command okay um, and if we look at this, you can see 3rd War Area, 23rd Group Army is part of 3rd War Area. So once we get all of 3rd War Area reconstituted up here, we can start moving them around again. But I want to get them organized when they get up here. So I'm just moving anything out of here that's not part of 3rd War Area. And is, you know, we want to keep the things here that are 7th War Area. So 23rd Group Army. Okay, what about 1st Group Army? Why is this down here? And that's a very strong core. 306. Well, let's go look. First group army. There it is. It's at 7646. It's all the way up here. You can see I've got it coming down the road here. Where do I have it ticketed for? Kwai Yang. And here's Kwai Yang, uh, kind of centrally located. I like to have something here because you can quick, well, that's not necessarily true. Maybe down here at Taiyun because you can put it on the rail. But for now, I'm having it go to Kwai Yang because here at Kwai Yang, you can help to the south. You can help to the east. You can even very quickly reverse and get up here and help in the north if you want to. So I think I'll have this first group army go meet them. Even though it's a really, really strong unit, we've got more things from Third War area coming up here. So we'll take that 60th Chinese Corps. The reason I had it down here initially is just to protect. He's got a lot of stuff here, but now we're starting to build enough strength here. I think I can get it out of here. So we're going to click it to move, and we are going to have that go to Kwai Yang, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to go through every single thing, but I'm going to basically leave Seventh War area here, but we also have remnants of Third War area that are coming in here, and then we'll have to decide where do we want Third War area to go. Maybe we'll leave it here. Maybe we'll just put it at these bases back here to to help the other two war areas uh, you know it's kind of whatever you decide to do at that time i've already got a unit back here that's part of 19th group army okay um it's a 406 really nice assault strength for a core a chinese core and i just happen to know that uh he says he knows but he doesn't i thought 19th group army was there but let's go find it where it is 19th group army it's at Kuei Lin, okay? So it's actually down here. I've moved part of 19th Group Army down here, even though it's part of 9th War Area. And 9th War Area is centered at Changsha. If we go here, 
There's Ninth War Area. So I've got some of Ninth War Area actually out of command a little bit down here. I kept one of its units, the strongest of its units, right here. Uh, that's just because we were a little light here, and maybe that tells us we move, maybe want to move Third War Area here, and then we move this part of Ninth War Area back up here, so they're all in command, right? What do we have at Changsha? It looks like we have a plane here, and it truly is just one plane and i'm actually going to get this out of here there's no reason to just sacrifice the one plane i was trying to catch a bombing run if he was doing a bombing run completely unescorted i haven't had fighters in this area recently and i was just going to try to catch him on that now you can see where we have our support our air support it's at chongqing hangyang wu chao kuilin chengtu um i think i'm going to put this back up at Chongqing, which, you know, kind of the provincial capital. We'll put that up here and just let it train. Uh, we'll put that on 100%. Training, maximum range zero. If we look at the data, these fly best at 15,000. They've got the same maneuverability that they do at 10. So we'll just have that training at 15,000 feet. Okay, we got that out of there. You see the yellow exclamation at Changsha, which indicates we're a little low on supply. It's not desperate yet it's not red but you know it's showing us we've got a little supply supply problem there now what all do we have at ninth war area well we've got ninth war area stuff we've got uh, construction base forces then we have 29th and 27th group army and if you look down here everything pretty much is in 29th and 27th except for this one unit you see the head high headquarters ninth war area 20th group army Okay, it's got a 274 on the assault value. Where is 20th Group Army? Well, let's go find it. There it is. It's at Ai Cheng. It's all the way back here at Ai Cheng. And I do think we'll take that and we'll get it out of Changsha. Right now we're at a little over 2,000 at Changsha. That's why we're showing yellow. Now, I will tell you, one of the real yin and yang things in China is how far do you build up your fortifications because it takes supply to build fortifications i would say any of the airfields for the most part do not expand okay uh, if we had a port we don't uh, we've been driven completely off the coast but if we did i wouldn't expand it the big decision is your fortifications i have built Changsha to a five ultimately above five or you know it's kind of law of diminishing returns right it as our supply situation potentially improves i may click this back on but i built it to a five and i turned it off um if you look at hang yang for instance so this is the you know what i consider the front line right through here up to lan chow where you know how far up are you building these things? Let's look at Hang Yang. I've only got that at a one. I do want to build fortifications there. Now we have a huge supply problem, but I'm moving a lot of units out of here, right, to try to alleviate that. And I think if we get down to about a thousand av, you know, the equivalent number of men of a thousand av, I think we should have a decent supply situation there. All right, so I think we should get this 20th out of here. Uh, it's the 73rd Chinese Corps, and for now, I'll put it on move, and I'll say to go to Ai Cheng, but you can see we have a huge supply problem at Ai Cheng, so it's probably not going to stop there, but let's get it up to its command at least. Some of these are down here because at the start, you have to scramble to make sure he can't just bulldoze you, right? So I got as much av down here as I could, but now we have to start adjusting getting things in command because with your Chinese forces, you have got to do every advantage that you can. You've got to build fortifications where you can. You've got to let things sit uh, at their objective as long as you can, and you have to get things in command. Okay, so we've moved that out of there, and now we'll just have 27th and 29th Group Army here, all under the direction of 9th War Area. And let's go back here. We've got another cavalry group from the Central Reserve sitting here, a good, a good cavalry group, 203. Now, I like to have a cavalry group in this area. I like to have one, you know, kind of up in this area, maybe up by Ai Cheng, because you can run out and, like I said, cut the rail. Even if you can cut it for a couple of turns, you may slow him down. What do I mean by that? Well, you get in the hex with the rail, and all of a sudden, 
uh, that rail is not going to be working for him any longer, and he's going to have to come try to clear you out uh, with the cavalry. You've got faster movement. You could maybe then come down here and, I don't know, cut a rail or go past here, because those guys can forage. And so right now, one thing we've noticed with Lodric is he's balling up his forces in these big, massive armies, and because of that, he maybe doesn't have as much coverage to the back as normal or as somebody that's not, you know, creating these super armies. So taking that cavalry and trying to get it out here, letting it forage off the land and just cut rail supply, I think can be very effective. And that's what I'm going to try to do here. Okay, uh, moving up here to Chengte. Uh, Chengte, I have a cavalry. You know, as we were talking about, it does have a garrison requirement. So who knows, you know, that unit, that 20th, uh, that part of 20th group army up, that we're moving up here. Maybe we'll just have it sit here as the garrison requirement. Uh, it could well, it'll be close to being in command. I think the um, group armies only have a radius of one. So it would be just out of command of 20th group army, but that's okay. We could always move it up here. It's behind the lines, right? We would just be satisfying the garrison requirement, but we could always move it up here if we got into trouble. Uh, back to Kui Yang here. Did we talk about Quang? I only have a base force here now. I'm actually not uh, covering the garrison requirement. We've got to get stuff here. Well, I've got things moving down the road as fast as possible. Try not to do that because you lose a point if you're not covering a victory point each turn if you're not covering that. What is this? What's, what's going on here? 89th Chinese Corps was sitting down here. It's a pretty weak core. We need to put replacements on and upgrades on because this just needs to build out. OK, uh, I've actually got this moving up here because it is part of Lusu War Area. And if we go look for Lusu War Area, where is it? 7744. It's moving. I've got it moving north. I'm trying to get as much up here into the north as I can. And so this is moving out. Meanwhile, these units from first group army that we talked about are moving here. And then the first group army unit we have here is going to come up here and meet them. Okay. I Chang is the biggest base we've got on here. 3118. It's massive. And what is it attached to? Uh, well, sixth war area. So six war areas in, in this region here, we've got two cavalry corps that we will try to get out and do what I was discussing as far as cutting rail lines with these cavalry corps. They're not, you know, particularly strong, uh, but they'll, they're fast. And even if they get destroyed, oh, well, I mean, you've lost a little bit, but if you can cut a rail line, it's well worth it. We've got six construction, which is directly attached to the war area. You'll find that these kind of supplementary uh, counters are attached directly to the war area. So the engineers, the base forces, the artillery, although the artillery oftentimes goes back to central reserve, you can see here we've got 44th Chinese Corps, which is directly attached to the war area. Okay. Then we've got 26th and 20th Group Army right here. Big, massive armies. And then we've got 33rd Group Army. I don't think we need that here. Uh, you can see it's got two cores in it. It's part of third war area down here. So let's get that out of here, right? Let's take third, or I'm sorry, let's take 33rd group army. We're going to move it. It was already set on move. And let's get it going back down here, maybe to this base, and buff it up third war area, which I think may end up over here at Quay Lin. We'll see uh, once he gets down here. But everything that's part of third war area which is, it's only 33rd group army. So to be these two cores, let's get them out of here because we've got a supply problem. Now I already had him marching to Cheng Te. I didn't check that, sorry. He may have already moved a little bit, but let's have him go even further. As a matter of fact, when I get back here, I'll see if I messed that up a little bit because uh, they're already on move. Yeah, he's already moved 40 dang miles. Well, each hex is only 46, so I'm just going to leave him alone and we'll change that next time. Well, that was a goof, but whatever. It's just going to cost him a turn or so of, you know, slower to get down here. But anyway, we're going to get them out of here to try to improve this supply situation. If you see with 3118 AV, we're asking for 9,275 tons of supply. We're only getting 3,000. 
And so, you know, we've got to get some things out of here. Now, everything else, though, is part of either 26th or 20th Army. You can see 20th Army is massive. Uh, it's far and away our largest group army. Uh, 26th, not as big. So I think we'll get 26th out of here and go put it somewhere else. Um, maybe up... Eh, I don't want it to get too far away from the war area. Maybe just right up here. Or we could put it right here. I think this is a very important hex. He's already taken Nanyang. If he wants to try to push up to the plateau, which obviously you just can't lose in China. You've got to defend this plateau to the death. Uh, if he's going to do it, he's probably going to try to cross right here. So I'll probably take 20th group army, which is the smaller of the two group armies, and just go set it right here on this road. They can forage out here. It'll relieve some of the supply situation there. Uh, but anyway, I think I'm going to call this an episode. We've gone on a long ways here. I don't like to go over an hour uh, because of my own attention span, but everybody else's as well. I think we covered a lot of cool, you know, good tips and stuff here in China. When we come back next time uh, for the setup phase, we'll look at northern China because I think we've got real problems up here and we've got to sort it out. You can see I've already got a lot of reinforcements coming down the roads here to try to get out to this potential base and to block him off here. He's now taken Cyan. Um, you know, I'm trying to run a confusion uh, directive out here by Yanan. We'll talk about that. Lan Chow, super important, worth 300 points. And the base just to the north of it signing also worth 300. That's 600 points. Uh, this is only 20 here at Kung Cheng. 600 points right here. We've got to get as much up here as we can, but we'll do all of that next time. So anyway, uh, when we come back, we're going to do the combat resolution for the 3rd and 4th of March. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. This has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. I always enjoy it. I hope you do too. Have a good one.